Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin here from Royal Highness Python and in today's video, I got a clutch to put away. So right here is my pastel fire orange dream female and she was paired to my pastel vanilla clown. And so vanilla and fire react in a way they make something called the vanilla cream and it's super cool. And when you add orange dream to it, it's even cooler. Pastel makes it cool too, it's called vanilla scream. And I'm hoping to hit all those 100% head for clown. So I'm gonna go set up the egg bin with some vermiculite right now. And we're gonna get right into that. But before that, huge shout out to a &K Reptile. Thank you so much for this cool shirt. Andy and Katie, thank you so much. And now let's get straight into this video. Okay, so here's everything you'll need. A tub with a lid, something to, well, you actually don't need this. I use something to keep the eggs away from the substrate so they don't get wet, but some people actually put their eggs right into the substrate. That's a little more risky, so I don't take that risk. And then you're gonna need some clean water. That's gonna be around room temperature. And you can go a little warmer, but nothing over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around, I believe 28 degrees Celsius. Not too sure on that, but so here I'm just gonna go and take this vermiculite. I just use a deli cup to scoop it out. Try not to make a mess. I just go and put a few scoops. This is about how much I would like inside of here. You want it to be an inch up from the sides. If you look at a side profile, it's about an inch up. And you just want to go around and just even it all out. Then you're going to go take your water. And I like just starting at the edges. Take one corner all the way to the other corner. And then just keep doing that till you reach that first corner once again. And then I just do that inside where the dry stuff is and I just pour it around a bit. And if you notice, when I add the water, we start getting some water accumulating on the sides here. And I want the water to accumulate about halfway up. So right around here is good. And now there's enough water to get everything wet. And I'm not done yet, so I'm just gonna go tilt it this way, get all the water mixed up everywhere, tilt it that way, tilt it this way, and then tilt it back. So once again, pat everything down, make sure it's all nice and smooth, all flush. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna go take my light diffuser. You can use an easy hatch tray. I don't have any, so I just use light diffusers. And I like to have a little area where I can pull up from just so it's easier to get out so you're not jamming your fingers in the side. or It's just a headache sometimes. So that's pretty much it for setting it up. So now we're gonna go and grab the clutch and put them away. So before I got the female out, I decided to pull the male out. This is my pastel vanilla clown male. He's super bright, crazy nice blushing coming up the sides. You got all these really nice yellow tones and yellow spots all along the inside. What's really cool, what I noticed with the vanilla clowns, is a lot of the pattern is dragged, especially towards the ends. If you look at both sides, a lot of it's connected and dragged. People think that this was just a pastel blade clown at first, but definitely see the vanilla compared to a normal pastel blade clown. They definitely do not get this bright, and the heads are not that blushed out. Oh, is this, this guy's a little feisty right now. I actually have some rats here, and he probably smells them, so. Hopefully I do not get tagged, but definitely one of my favorite males. Had him paired to a lot of things, and the next clutch cutting may actually be one of his clutches, so stay tuned for that. Now let's go get the female. So once again, pastel, fire, orange dream, and she's also possible hep pied, and she seems super feisty. And when we have a feisty female, there's, you can do one of two things. You can tap her on the head with the napkin or you can actually rip one out and put it over her head and when you're doing that you can kind of grab just behind the neck so that she cannot tag you and then you want to get one more finger at the tail 
to get the eggs out. And right there, we got a nice clutch of five eggs. I'm just gonna leave her right here because I can't wash her at this moment. Maybe this will protect me. But let me just grab these eggs. You got one, two. Oh, I was just thinking in my head. I'm so glad these aren't connected. And the next three were connected. So I'm not gonna go and disconnect those right now just because she's still out here and I wanna go and clean her tub as quick as possible and wash her. So right now I'm actually just gonna quickly clean the tub while she's still out here. And we're gonna save and recycle and use that same napkin that we covered her with just to wipe the tub down. Less waste, especially paper, it's not good for the environment. Holy cow, I almost got tagged there twice. I should definitely keep a hand on her, an eye on her as well. And uh, I'm trying to get some of these urates out of here. If you notice, a lot of the urates I leave in with the pregnant females. And I do that just to make them feel a little more comfortable. Uh, it's kind of like their own scent. It's like when you come home after being away for a while and you get that home smell that kind of wears off. It's very nice, very soothing, and they definitely enjoy that. So it's pretty clean now. I'm just gonna go mix this up. I'm also gonna add some new bedding and take care of a little more blemishes, but I'm gonna get her washed first. So I'll see you guys in one. Here's the female all washed. She's definitely fully empty. You see that crevice that's left from where the eggs were. And she's gonna try, I'm gonna try feeding her in about a week or two, get her settled back in. But if you noticed before, there wasn't too much water inside of the bin while she was uh, laying the eggs. And that's a really good tip because when we're pulling out the bins, we have a lot of water spilling. And if you leave just enough so that they can still go in there to get a drink, but not enough so when you're opening the tub, the water doesn't spill everywhere, you're not gonna get the eggs wet and you're not gonna go and kill them. So basically now, the tub's all clean, put back a normal amount of water and leave it that way until next year and she's grab it again. So I'm just gonna go put her back here and now I'm gonna go get these three eggs unattached. Still haven't touched those yet and I hope they're fairly easy. Don't wanna mess with them too much. This one's coming off pretty good. We got one there. And then the last one, boop. so we got five eggs. I'm gonna go candle them right now, so give me one second. So I have a little bit of ambient light going on right now, but I'm just gonna use my phone because I do not have a little light like Billy does. But right here, you see there's the embryo moving there, so that egg is right like that. This egg, same thing, you got the embryo moving right there, perfect. This one I left upside down. So right there's the embryo. So almost looks like we have two. Nope, I think it might be just one. So let me get this next egg. I'll actually do this egg first. And it was dead right in the center. Perfect. And this one, again, dead right in the center. Perfect. So I only had to move two eggs. Really lucky I, I situated three of them in the right spot. I think we're gonna end the video off here. So do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, peace out to the next video. And comment down below what you would like to see the next video. So, see you guys.